section 14.1, we're going to take a look um, a little further into something you guys started last time. So what did we do in class last time? You measured stuff. In particular, you measured what kind of a measurement? Length. So you talked about length measurements. Um, so we're going to start with length measurements, and not just metric, although we will talk about metric today. We're also going to talk about um, some different kind of measurements that you guys are maybe more familiar with, but that are not quite as easy actually to work with in reality. So let's get started. Linear measure is what this is called. So linear measure refers to measuring in a straight line as with a ruler. Some things to remember. Distance is never negative. The distance from A to B is the same as it is from B to A. And there are two primary measurement systems. English, uh, there's some other names for this. Let me I should tell you that too while we're here. Sometimes you'll hear this called the standard. Um, and then there's metric. Okay, so English and standard are used interchangeably depending on what resources you're looking at. Your book uses the word English, um, but some use the word standard. And then our second option is metric. So metric is kind of where we um, settled last class period, and we're going to <laughs> talk a little bit about that today, but then also talk about standard or the English measurements. So we're going to do the English measurement first, actually. So these are some common English measurement pieces of information. Um, you're going to see chart upon chart upon chart in chapter 14, okay? So when you get to the test, I'll tell you what it is that you'll be given and what you should remember and or put on your note cards. We'll delve into that. What do I need to know in terms of memorization later? Okay, so don't worry about that at the moment. Just have your charts there. Some of the things in this chart you know. You know that a foot's 12 inches. Okay, if, you, if you've grown up in the United States, that's just one that we, we use all the time. And you probably also know that a yard is three feet. You may or may not have memorized somewhere along the way the number of yards or feet in a mile. That's one that we use less often. So um, honestly, I don't remember the yard one. I always just remember the foot one and use that one as the one that I you know, use for any of my conversions. But you could use either one of them um, interchangeably. So these are the three or four, depending on your perspective, um, conversions that we're going to use for the first sets of problems. All right, so the first set of problems, looking at this, takes different measurements in from one into the other. And we mentioned this in passing last time. I didn't do any examples because we were going to do it today. But we're going to look at how we convert inside of our standard or our English system, okay? And um, it's called dimensional analysis, which sounds super fancy. So if you want to sound really smart to people who are not in this class today, you should tell them what you did, dimensional analysis. And they're going to have like this glazed over look on their face. And you're going to know that it really isn't as bad as it sounds, okay? So here's what this looks like. You're going to start with the measurement that you are given. In this case, it's 72 feet. And you're going to multiply by a fraction. Now, you guys know that you can multiply by fractions as long as what's on the top and on the bottom are equivalent. Now, in solving equations, that usually means we put the same number on the top and the bottom. 3 over 3, 7 over 7, stuff like that. Well, we're not going to do that here, but we're going to put the same value on top and bottom. In particular, what we're wanting is we're wanting the feet to cancel out and to become yards. So I put the feet on bottom so that what you can see is that this feet and this feet, which is terrible English, will cancel, right? Because one's in the numerator, so to speak, and the other's in the denominator. <laughs> now, right now, my fraction just has the units on it, yards and feet. It doesn't have the actual numerical values. So over here in this chart, and probably from your memory, you know that three feet is the same thing as one yard. So you need to make sure that when you're putting the three and the one in here, you put them in the right places. So where will the three go? Will it go in the numerator or in the denominator? Denominator, denominator because it's supposed to be three feet is equal to one yard. So these are equal measurements on the top and bottom. And as long as the fraction has an equal value on the top as on the bottom, you can multiply without actually changing the actual value, in this case, the length value. Now, it changes the units, it changes the numerical number, but it doesn't change the actual length, and that's what our goal is. So if you take a look now, we are left with yards, so our solution, our answer, will be in yards, and what we need to do is we need to actually take these numbers. So whatever is on across the top, you're going to multiply together, not very exciting here, 72 times 1, 
And then you divide it by anything that's multiplied in the denominator. So that would be, we're going to take this and divide it by 3. Okay, so grab your calculator or do this longhand, whatever it takes. What we want to do is we want to do 72 divided by 3. What is it? 24. And it's 24 what? Yeah. Yards. Okay, so there's other ways of doing this. I get that. But the more complicated the problems get, the harder they're going to be able to be doing just in your head. You might have been able to look at this one and just known, I just need to divide by 3. I'm going to have my answer. I'm all done. But the more conversions that we go through from getting this from feet into whatever it wants us to move it into later, the more difficult the process will become. So this process is what I want you to use so that it will extend nicely into more complicated situations. Okay? You do need to show your work because that's kind of what the whole process indicates is that in order to know you did it that way and you're thinking about it correctly, I can see the work you've done. I have a question. Yes. Um, we did this in like chemistry. Yes. We call it the picket fence. Yes. Is it okay if we like do it like that, like show the work that way? So I think you mean where you're drawing it kind of like this, yes. right? Yep, that's the same thing. Sure, absolutely, no problem. Since I already drew mine, we'll do it on this one for you that way too, yeah. okay? All right, so we're going to start out with the 89 or 8,923 yards. And we want the yards to cancel. So it's got to go in the denominator. And the goal is to, you, to move it from yards into miles, so we'll put miles on top. All right, so what's the corresponding ratio from miles to yards? 1760. Where will the 1760 go? In the denominator, because it's actually one mile that's equal to 1760 yards. The yards cancel. And what we're really needing to do then is to divide 8923 divided by 1760. So what would that quantity be? And we'll use two decimal places because I think this one actually needs to round something. So we'll go with two decimal places, write that note to yourself, two decimal places unless you're told otherwise. This one approximates to 5.07 what? Miles. So if somebody tells you that they went out and they ran 8,923 yards, you would be able to convert this and say, yep, that's something you could have done. Right? You really could have run 5.07 miles. It's possible. All right, 37 miles. So now we're starting with the miles. And we're taking a ratio that takes miles into inches. Now, if I just write this down, there's a problem. Any idea what the problem is? Yeah. Okay, so let me take what you said, Leah, and just change the words just a little bit. We don't have a conversion written down where we can go straight from miles into inches, right? Yeah, so it will make more sense for us if we have sort of a two-step process where we can either change the miles into yards or the miles into feet and then turn it into inches. So what would be the natural change in order to change it into inches in the end? What's my intermediate? Feet. So if I went from miles into feet, and then I'm going to go from feet into inches, then both of those ratios, those equalities, are in the box and I can use them from the previous slide. So what's the correspondence between feet and miles? OK, 5,000 what? 280 feet in one mile. And then what's the correspondence between inches and feet? 12 inches are in one foot. So my feet cancel and the miles cancel. And this one ends up being quite a large number because I have 37 times 5280 times 12, right? So what happens when we multiply those three numbers together? What'd you get, Erica? Uh, it's big. It's okay. Okay. And Leah got it for us. Is that what yours showed too, Erica? Yes, I was deciding how to say it. How to say it? Reading off numbers. Yeah, because the calculator doesn't put the commas in there at all, right? Yeah. So inconvenient. Okay. Two million three hundred forty-four thousand three hundred twenty inches. It's a lot of inches, right? It is a lot of inches. Okay, any questions on this one? 
Okay, so this is the linear measurement conversions and dimensional analysis, or if you want to think of a visual, like Emily said, a picket fence would work for this um, to change these. All right, the metric system, <laughs> which we talked about last time, but now we're going to talk about it again, and it's going to be recorded, right, because we're on you know, the, the recording here. This is called the international system. It's especially used in science and industry. So sometimes instead of the word metric, you'll call it, hear it called the SI, science and industry system as well. There are multiples or fractions of base units are given by powers of 10. So everything is a 1 to 10, 1 to 100, 1 to 1,000. It's all powers of 10 ratio, which obviously did not happen with our inches, our feet, our miles, and so forth, right? Didn't happen. The prefixes correspond to various multiples and fractions for all type of units. So that's actually talking about the fact that we're going to use it right now in this section for linear measure in meters. <laughs> but in a couple sections from now, we're going to use it for grams, and we're going to use it for liters. So when it talks about this all types of units, that's what it's referring to. These prefixes are used whether we're talking about a base unit that's meters, liters, or grams. Same base or same prefixes. All right, so the prefixes look like this. We brought these up last time. Um, kilo, hecto, deca. And then there's our base unit, which does not have a prefix, deci, centi, and milli. The ones that are starred are the ones that we use. You'll see them actually in measurements consistently um, across um, resources. So if you were to actually see something measured in hectometers, that would be highly unusual. Okay? But you will see things measured in kilometers or kilometers. Right? So what's something you see measured in kilometers, kilometers? Races. Because it's how we do things, right? You talk about a 5K, that's 5 kilometers or kilometers. Um, centimeters. Centimeters, you guys are measuring lots of things in centimeters. What are some of the things you measured last time in centimeters? Your hand. What else? Height. Height. Yes. Dollar bill. Dollar bill. All right, good. And then what about millimeters? What are, what were... The dime, you did the dime in millimeters. Millimeters is a super tiny measurement, right? Itty, itty, bitty, okay? And these are the factors or um, the correspondences that we looked at last time. So if you take a look over here, this is sort of filled in as a whole for meters. So if meters is our base unit, which it is for linear measure, then we're looking at kilometers, hectometers, decameters, meters, I didn't say. What, what do we measure in meters? Any idea what you measure in meters? Okay, le length of what, though? <laughs> what? Field events and track. That's actually where my mind went to. Yeah, long jump, high jump, and the, and the short meter stuff, right? Like your 50-meter runs or something like that, right? <coughs> the ones that only take seconds. It only takes seconds to do those. Right? Swimming. They will do swimming in those as well. Um, I think we do it in yards. Are football fields measured in yards? Yeah, um, I'm going to guess if you look at soccer fields, they might measure them in meters just because that's more of an internationally recognized sport than, you know, than football. So, all right, so these are the same thing on the previous slide, right? The only thing you're seeing different is the M written at the end of each one of them. Um, there is a confusion here, at least a potential confusion, so be aware of it. This one and this one are both D. Decameters is always DA, and decimeters is just the D. So please be careful that you're using which one you intend to be using because they do both start with a D, all right? Okay, let's take a look at some metric estimations that could be useful. Um, at some <coughs> point here, before you have this metric system quiz, what I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you in your mind to create or to think of measurements that you can on the, on the fly um, you know, if somebody says meters, you have a picture in your mind of what that looks like. So this is an example of one. So if you were to ling ling you know, lengthen out your arm, hold your arm out, stretch it out, thank you, stretch, and you went from your opposite shoulder to the fingertip, that's about a meter. And obviously that's an approximation, right? Because some of us have longer arms than others. I'm sure that my husband's is more than a meter. He has crazy long legs and arms. Some of you track people probably do too. Lacey, Lacey, do you have long legs and arms? Yeah. Yeah, that's not surprising. All right. But others of us, like Amy, I'm going to pick on you a little bit, probably not as long, right? No. Probably not. Um, so this is, a, this is an estimate. Do you remember one of the measurements you did last time that was really close to a meter? 
What was it? Not your height. Your height was considerably more than a meter. The doorknob down. And how often do you see a doorknob down in your life? <coughs> many, many times a day, right? So that's another good measurement as an approximation. Is every doorknob exactly one meter? Well, no, but it's pretty close, OK? Um, a couple others here. So metric mes estimations for centimeters and millimeters. So here's a centimeter. <coughs> centimeter is about the width of your finger, OK? The width of your finger. And you see that every day, too, right? Yeah, you definitely do. So this is a good ballpark measurement for a centimeter. And then they give you the measurement for a millimeter, um, or they show you an example, as the end of the paper clip, the little tiny end. And there was another one you did last time, which was what? The dime, the width of the dime. So these are all measurements where you can keep in your mind. That way, if somebody says something like, I had a baby, and the baby's five centimeters long, you can be like, I don't think so. I don't think so, right? Are you guys with me? Because that's the kind of thing that happens a lot, is that there's these random units that come up and you're like, OK, because you're just not so very familiar with them, and you just take it at, at, you know, at the word of somebody else. Um, when we get to capacity, I will tell you an example um, of one of those kinds of things that happened when I went to observe a student teacher. It was actually your sister, Lacey. It wasn't her fault. It was from the textbook. And it had a measurement that was totally bizarre. Um, and so it, it was one of those things. If you had a reference point, you would know it was totally bizarre. So we'll get there later. All right, so we have a few of these. I want us to take a look at these. We, again, we talked about doing this last time, and I know you guys did this some last time, but we didn't do it together. So let's actually formally do it together. We talked about an acronym that's pretty useful for converting. What was our acronym for our metric measurement system? <laughs> King Henry died by, so this is B's for base, uh huh. Drinking chocolate milk. All right, so this is, I'm going to put on the bottom of our screen. The first one gives us a 1.68, and it gives it to us in kilometers, and it's wanting us to create, or to turn this into meters. Are you trying to create another acronym over there? Can we do that after class? Would that be okay? Happy dogs. Don't kill the happy dogs. What? Oh no, let's stop. This is just not doing this is not doing any of us any favors. Okay, back to the topic at hand. Problem number four. All right, we're at 1.68 in the kilometers area or column, if you will, and we want to move over to the base unit of meters. So how many moves is this that we're gonna be making? Three. We're gonna go from you know what, let me use another color. Let's try that one. Can you see that? That's not too bad. All right, this is one move from K to H. Here's our second move from H to D, and here's our third <coughs> move from D to B. Okay, so it's three moves to the right. So in terms of our number that we're given, whoops, We've got 1.68, and we need to move it three to the right. So this is one unit to the right, two units to the right, and I need another zero to move it three units to the right. So this ends up giving me 1680 meters, 1,680 meters. Now, I don't know about you, but maybe the picket fence is not terribly difficult, but this is still easier, right? Picket fence, that's what, that's what Emily called it, the dimensional analysis over here. Oh like this, this this one, she called it a picket oh, fence, what? Train tracks. train tracks, fantastic, yeah, that's true, yeah, so the dimensional analysis, I mean, you guys didn't like freak out when I showed it to you or anything, but I still contend that this is easier, right, all you're doing is moving decimal places, all right, let's try it again now with the 973, let me erase where I am down here, we're at 973 what? Millimeters, so 973 would be in the far right column. And I want to turn it into meters. So again, this is my base unit. How many places am I going to have to move the decimal? Yeah, one, two, three actually. Yeah, it's four away. I mean, there's four, four uh, different measurements we're looking at between them. Um, but we're starting with the millimeters already, so we don't have to turn it into that. So it's three places to the left. So I'm starting with 973 
and the decimal place is understood to be at the back because we aren't told anything different. And we're going to move the decimal three to the left. So here's one, two, three. So we end up with a decimal point, nine, seven, three. So 973 thousandths, that's how you read that number. All right, last example on this one, number six. We're going to take, uh, let's see, 0 0.42 kilometers. So that's right here. And I want to turn it into what? Centimeters, which is really far to the right, isn't it? How many? Five. Alyssa, that's right, it's five. So we've got one move, two moves, three moves, four moves. It's five moves to the right. So it's starting out as a decimal point and 42. And I need to move it five to the right. So two moves to the right puts me at 42. And then I'm going to have to put three more zeros to move it the other three units to the right. So I'm going to end up with 42,000 centimeters. How important are units in this section? Very. Very, because that's the whole point, right? We're changing it from one unit to the next. So make sure that you're filling in units when it doesn't already like, have, like the one before here obviously had it you know, written in on my screen. But on your paper, that won't be the case, OK? Commas? commas are your choice. I usually encourage you to do it just because like when Erica was looking at her number, it's harder to read without the commas in um, when you're just looking at the number. Um, but actually, the commas are not a mathematical Thing. They're really a reading of the mathematics. Um, so if you leave the commas out, it's not wrong. Does that make sense? Yeah, it just makes life easier to have them there. Okay, let's take a look at some other issues. Triangle inequality. You've probably seen this, um, but I don't know where you would have necessarily run across it the first time or the <laughs> last time. This says that the sum of the measures of any two sides of a triangle must be greater than the measure of the third side. So imagine if you were given three line segments, like the, is done on the bullet point below, and you're trying to figure out if it creates a triangle. So like if you took a ruler and you measured out seven centimeters, five centimeters, and 30 centimeters as line segments. Okay, I, mean, I know you don't really have line segments because those don't have any depth, but just pretend you had lengths that are that long. And you're trying to put them together to create a triangle. Imagine what would happen if they didn't actually add up, like visually. So let's say, for instance, we had one that was six, and one that was two, and a third side that was seven. If I tried to put the other side on here, even if it were flat, it wouldn't be long enough. It's longer than either piece, but it's not long enough to actually create a triangle, right? Because two of the sides have to add together. I didn't say that right. It would be, and that's not what I wanted. I wanted it to be longer. Let me make it longer. I was thinking about the other part I was going to tell you a minute. What did I want? Uh, how about nine? That's what we want. Nine. There we go. Better. Mm -hmm. If I put those two <clears throat> sides end to end, like imagine that I instead put the six actually touching the nine. So here's six, and here's two, and they will never meet. Right? No matter how thin the triangle becomes, it's still not going to be long enough. And you've probably heard the phrase that goes along with this that says something like this. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line, which means that if I go a different direction, I'm going to be going further. So these two smaller lines that are labeled now 6 and 2 can't be enough because that's not as much as the 9 already is. Okay? Now, taking a look at the numbers, we're going to decide whether or not it can work. So whichever one the biggest side is, that's the one that we want to be what? Bigger or smaller? Bigger. Smaller. We want it to be smaller. Um, we wait. don't want it. To, wait, is what I say wrong? Don't <laughs> we don't want it to be. No, we, we want it to be smaller. We want it to be smaller. Yes? No. Seven and five have to be bigger than Yeah, I still said it wrong. I'm still screwing my words up. All right, what's five plus seven? Let's just do that. Twelve. Okay, twelve. All right, we want the sum, the twelve, to be what? Bigger than the third side. Is it? No. no. So the 12 is not bigger than 13. 
you could say less than, that would be all right, but it's not bigger, which is the whole point. So there is no triangle. <coughs> If it's the same, there's no triangle either because basically what it would do is it would create a line segment. So you'd have like, let's say that this was 9 and then this was 6 and this was 3, totally not drawn to scale. It would still just create two line segments when put together when you try to put them end to end. Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, fantastic. Sure enough, what's 5 plus 8? 13. And 13 is not bigger than 13, so there is no triangle. Okay, another component of linear measure is the, uh, is the measurement of perimeter. So perimeter of a simple closed curve is the length of the curve. If you're looking at a polygon, it's the sum of the side lengths, or you can think of it as the distance around the polygon. So if we gave you a hexagon, you would need to add up all the sides of the hexagon and that would be its perimeter. Right, the summation of all the side lengths. If you could imagine taking a string and stringing it around your object so that it was really tight fitting, the length of that string is what we would call the perimeter. Okay? So here's an example. This one's a triangle. Find the perimeter of the triangle. So I'm not even going to say anything else. You guys find it. Tell me what you get. Thirty centimeters. Oh, I like that you said centimeters. Who said that? Was that you, Erica? Okay. So what'd you do, Erica? I added all of them together. You added all of them together. Eight plus ten plus twelve. Did everybody get thirty? Yes. yes. Did everybody write down centimeters? Yes. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. Yes. Got to have the centimeters part written down because a thirty centimeter perimeter is different than a thirty inch perimeter, right? Yes, it is. Along the lines of perimeter is a specific measurement called circumference. Circumference is a perimeter. It's just a perimeter of a special type of curve. In particular, a circumference is a perimeter of a circle. The radius of a circle is the distance from the center to the circle's edge. We call it little r. Oh, we call circumference capital C. Um, the diameter is the distance from edge to edge through the center. Got to go through the center. It doesn't work. We denote it by little d. And you should notice that if the radius goes from the center to the edge, then the diameter is going from edge to edge, then it's two radiuses put together is all it is. So it's 2r. So d equals 2r. And we have the special number pi. Pi is the ratio of the circumference to the diameter. And the way you usually think about it, or probably have thought about it in the past, is it's a formula, or it's used in, the formula for circumference. So circumference equals pi times diameter, or circumference equals 2 pi times the radius. Okay? Um, just to give you some perspective, um, circumference, radius, all this stuff we're talking about, like on this slide, sixth grade math. Okay? actually seen somebody teach it in the public schools like recently my student teacher did so sixth grade math it's revisited again in seventh grade as well so have no fear if you missed it in seventh sixth grade you're gonna see it again in seventh grade uh, and then you take tests on them all too it's all there so this is sixth grade seventh grade math <coughs> okay arc length arc length related to the central angle a central angle is the angle whose vertex is at the center of the circle and its sides are radii of the circle. Radii is the word like syllabi, right? It's the singular, actually, or the plural and whatever. So radii, two radius is, which is not a word. The length of the circular arc is given by little l equals pi r theta over 180, where r is the radius of the circle, theta is the measure of the central angle, determining the arc. Now I'm going to show you where in the world that equation came from because it looks kind of random. It's not. <coughs> okay. And I can actually tell you something in your real life that you can measure now that you know this formula. Super cool. Are you ready? 
Okay, what, you want to measure something for, I mean, like, do you want me to tell you what you can measure? Just like pizza. Your pizza crust, that's right. You can measure the crust of your pizza. Super cool stuff. Okay, so let me show you where the formula comes from. Okay, we talked about a minute ago, and nobody sort of freaked out when I said it, that the circumference has a formula that relates to the radius. What was the <laughs> circumference formula that involved radius? 2 pi r. We looked at that, right? Not squared. The squared comes in when we talk about area, and we don't have a 2. So we'll talk about area later, but that's not today. So circumference is just 2 pi r. So take a look at this formula right here. Do you see a pi and an r in it? Yes. The other thing that you see that's not in the formula that I've got right now is you see a theta and a 180 in the denominator. Do you see that? <laughs> So let's talk about where the theta and the 180 come from, because you understand perfectly well where the 2 pi r comes from. So over here in your circle, you have a radius right here. I just highlighted it in yellow. And if you extended this all the way across like that, then the length of this angle would be what? 180. Everybody good so far? Okay. So the whole, well not the whole, but the portion of this angle that you're seeing for a half of a circle is 180 <coughs> degrees. But your angle for your central angle is designated by theta. So your ratio, your portion or proportion of the circle is just this piece which corresponds to the theta. It's a proportion. That's all this is. There is a proportional measurement some of you guys have been doing still proportion stuff with um, your last test redo, right? Where you did some similar triangle things and you set up some proportions for me. That's all this is, is it's a proportion. The theta is the portion of your circle that's actually compared to the 180 total. And that's what you're seeing. Okay? So your length of your arc is actually 2 pi. Did I have a 2? Hang on. Yeah, it's pi. That's what I wanted to do. Actually, let me go back and fix that for a second. Um, yeah, I'll fix it right here. Your theta compares to the whole circle, which is 360. And then the 2 cancels with the 360. I knew I was missing something on my formula. There we go. So this reduces to the 180. Okay, so the whole circle is 360 degrees, and your portion of it is just the theta of it. Okay. So this reduces to pi r theta and division by 180. And now you can find your pizza crust. And it's actually an interesting fact because most of your um, pizzas, when you go get them, <coughs> are measured by your what? How do they tell you the size of pizza that you're ordering? Do you know? They usually tell you it by the diameter. They'll do a 14-inch diameter or a 12-inch diameter. So you could actually calculate this. Um, as a matter of fact, random aside here for a moment. So um, you guys familiar with Weight Watchers? Yeah. I've done Weight Watchers many, many times in my life. So on Weight Watchers, there's point values associated with it, and they're related to calories and all these kinds of things. And I literally sat down because they didn't have the size of pizza that I needed in their little booklet, and I had to figure out what the numbers were that went with it. And I did this. I did it for area, not for the length of the curve. But there's a very similar component for how you do area the same way. And it relates to the central arc, how many slices of pizza are in the pizza, and things like that. So, see, I've really used this in super real life stuff. Super real life, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do an example. We have a circle. The circle has a diameter of 4 over pi centimeters. And the question is, what is the circumference? So what is the formula that relates the quantities in this particular word problem? Yeah, so the cir circumference equals pi times the diameter. And this is actually a beautiful thing here, because what's going to happen when I put the diameter in? Yeah, those pi's cancel. It's beautiful. And all we're left with is a 4. And for what? Centimeters. Make sure you're using the units that you're given in the problem, centimeters. Now, number 9 does not do the problem in the same order right? It talks about circumference and it talks about radius, but it gives you the circumference, not the radius. So for starters, what <laughs> equation do you have that relates circumference and radius? 
circumference equals 2 pi r. Now be careful because especially if you were teaching this to children, what do you think that most of them are going to do at this point? Seriously. Any ideas? Panic. Oh, <laughs> panic? Melody, really? I panicked. You panicked. I'm so sorry. Well, they're going to do something with the point six eight. Agreed? They're going to plug in that R. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the, the majority of the problems that you start with when you're working with circumference and so forth give you radius and they have you find circumference. Radius, you find circumference. Radius, you find circumference. But at some point along the way in a problem, this is what will happen. They will give you the circumference and they're asking you to find the radius. So you do need to be careful and when you're thinking about talking to kids about these quantities, telling them also to be careful about which one they're actually given. This one is that the circumference is equal to 0.68. So you need to make sure that you're plugging in the 0.68 in the right place. So the 0.68 will go in for which letter? C. So 0.68 goes in on the left, 2 pi r on the right. Then what? You divide, you divide, excuse me, yes, by the 2 pi. Now, another word to the wise with your calculator. Please make sure that your calculator understands that it's not divide by 2 and then multiply by pi. Many of your calculators will require that you put a parenthesis around that denominator. Otherwise, it will not do order of operations the way you intended it to do them. So it's quite possible and highly advisable that when you put this in your calculator, you put 2 and pi in the denominator together. It's also highly advisable because we're in college and you guys can totally handle a pi button in your calculator that you use the pi button and not 3.14. Now, there are resources that you may use in the future where it tells you approximate pi using 3.14 or approximate pi using 22 over 7 and that's fine, <coughs> but that's not what we're going to do because we have a pi button. We're using scientific calculators, so we're going to keep it as exact and precise as we can. Okay? So, if you put in 0.68, you divide by a parenthesis quantity 2 pi, what do you end up with? And it, we're going to do approximation with two decimal places. 0.11 meters. Thank you. 0.11 meters. All right, I think if we go quickly, we can finish the last two and then... Well, hang on. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying you have to do the homework, but we can at least finish this in all one video, okay? So hold on to that thought. We'll address that in a minute. All right, this one says, what is the length of a semicircular arc of a circle whose radius is one-half inch? So this is the formula that I was trying to describe before that we were looking at that's pi r theta over 180, right? So your radius is the one-half inch. That's R. But what is this semicircular arc business talking about? It's half of a circle. So what's the angle measure for half of a circle? 180. So when we're looking at plugging values in, the R is 0.5, but the theta is 180, and wonderful, beautiful things happen. What happens when you have the 180s cancel? They do. So you just have 0.5 times pi, and what is that if we turn it into a decimal approximation? We're going to decimal approximation everything, by the way. So we can't ever, like, you don't ever want to study it with the pi? No, and the reason is because we're talking about actually something that's measured. Okay. And if you told somebody that it was 0.5 pi right. inches, they're going to look at you like, I don't know how to measure that. Yeah. So that's the why. What is 0.5 times pi? 1.57 inches. 1.57 inches. And then our last one asks us to find the radius when the arc is 82 and the length is 160. So we've got the same formula, pi r theta over 180. This one actually gives us the length to be 160. We have pi. Radius is what we're looking for. The angle measure theta is the 82 degrees and we have our 180. You can do this one of two ways. You can find what is pi times 82 divided by 180 on the right and find that decimal approximation. Okay, in fact, that's probably the most straightforward way, so let's do that. The other thing you could do is you could move all those numbers to the left-hand side first and then do the calculation, which is totally fine as well. 
So somebody grab your calculator. I'd like for you to multiply pi times 82 and divide by 180. So what, and we'll use four decimals for now, just so that we don't round something too soon. Three's probably enough, but we'll just go with four. Did you get it, Selena? Yeah, 1.431. Okay. okay. Um, and then it's times R, right? Because we didn't have the R yet. So then what will we do as our last step? Yeah, you just divide by the 1.4312. And we'll use our decimal approximation, two decimals at the end of the problem, just like we have been. What is your radius? What was it? What'd you get, Leah? Did you get a number? You didn't do it. Jasmine Rose, do you have it? Two decimals. Eight zero? Was seven nine something that would round it up to an eight zero? What are my units? Centimeters. All right.